Hello, welcome to Music Motors and welcome to the 2019 Honda CRV. Now, unlike the last episode, this one is not powered by a 1.5 litre petrol engine. This is instead powered by a 2 litre petrol engine and electricity. So Honda one day decided that, okay, we are making the best selling SUV in the world. Let's make it hybrid because everyone's doing hybrid. And in typical Honda fashion, they weren't half assed about it. They've ended up with what is probably the best hybrid SUV on the market in this segment, let's be honest. This one's powered by a 2 litre petrol engine, 140 brake horsepower, 220 newton meters of torque, gets to 62 miles an hour in 9.2 seconds, topped out 114. This one in the up, up, up there trim EX with uh, paint options like 37,800 pounds. If you want to go for base on an EX without that paint option, it's 37.3, and then you can get a bottom S two-wheel drive for 26. So here's the 2019 Honda CRV Hybrid. Around town, Honda make claims like 55 miles per gallon out of this. Now, being a hybrid and the fact that it can regenerate quite well means that within reason, maybe that's achievable. It's a big car, so let's find out if it can actually do that solely around town there's going to be a little bit of traffic but it's going to be an easier run because it's quite early in the morning um and my hair is brewing already let's see what we get So much like the non-hybrid brother that I tested last week, the exterior styling is nice. 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels, good bold styling from the outside, covering over all sorts of different styling quirks that Honda are now using throughout their, their range. The front end is very bold and defined. The sign has nice, sleek, long sweeping edges. The only way I can put it in the back end is an ugly. CRVs have kind of been a bit hit or miss me over the years, and this one is definitely there. No longer are CRVs a ugly box on wheels. They're a pretty box on wheels, and you can't deny it. When it comes to this kind of shape, it is a bit boxy, but now it's just got these nicer, stronger lines. As per my criticism of the previous one, the fact that the arch is kind of bowled out on the, um, on the bonnet means that you think you're considerably closer to the curb or another vehicle than you actually are. Aside from that, it's a really, really good looking SUV. This fits in wherever you want to put it without fitting in too much. It stands out just enough to know that you've got something a little bit nicer than competition. Putting it up against Toyota and Lexus, they've got cars in this segment, but they're nowhere near as pretty. The new RAV4, for instance, let's not go there. Time to see just how much equipment can fit in the back. saying it was going to take everything in because the previous CRV did but it's good to notice but it's good to note that even though it's got extra batteries under there it's not affected just how much capability you have of load. When you step inside the same refinements as you find in the normal CRV are still here except because this is a lot quieter on the outside it means it's a lot quieter on the inside too. There is considerably less engine noise because realistically around town your engine's gonna turn off 90% of the time, not 90%, but you know, a good portion of it. And it has that normal, good build quality that the new CRV has. The only criticism that I really have is from the inside looking out that because the arches kind of bulge out a bit more, it is a very Japanese design, uh, it gives you the impression you're closer to things than you actually are. Inside the seats are comfortable, the driving position's great, visibility is amazing. The panoramic sunroof is a really convenient option when the sun's out, which is about two days a year in the UK. The infotainment, again, same as, as the, the normal CRV, a little bit out of date, but you can see Honda trying to make progressions. It is getting better. The sound system is loud and punchy. It's great sounding. DAB, you've got Apple Car Connect, you've got Android Auto, all those kind of different things as standard on this. An EX really gives you everything you could ever need and more. At the front, you are very comfortable and 
you have nice wood trim at the back, you've got heated seats at the back. Great legroom, easy accessibility, and a good amount of boot space. It kind of just shows to me that, I mean, even if you're getting one of these in just an S, I say just an S, but you know, if you're getting one in the, the entry trim, it's still gonna be fantastic. You won't get things like that, but you still get a great looking SUV with bargain family capabilities. You go for an EX and you get everything you need and more. Realistically, with a good deposit, you can get one of these for about £380 a month. Now, as a hybrid, with this amount of technology on the inside that looks that good on the outside, I think that's really good value for money. So, there's only one thing left. It is gig test time. Now, the hybrid is supposed to get really good figures around town and pretty decent on the motorway. With all my equipment in the back, judging by the fact that this has a two litre petrol and then it's got a electric motor, it shouldn't struggle. It has more than enough torque to pull me around. In fact, I think it's the same torque figure as the uh, one I've had last week. So, how's it gonna do when I put it through the gigging test? This is a lot of B road and some A road as well. So, let's see. So Honda claim 51.4 miles per gallon combined in an all-wheel drive hybrid, and I've just got 51.9. Really surprising, so that's everything that you just watched, including that freak hailstorm at the beginning and kind of halfway through. A mix between back roads, A roads, acceleration, traffic, all sorts. That's really good, especially when you consider the size of this vehicle. Performance. And hybrids kind of give you this weird performance in that they don't have a very high top speed, 114 miles an hour, but they get there pretty quickly. This is about a second faster to 60 than the standard CRV. And I'd say to 30 miles an hour, it's considerably faster because, well, you touch the accelerator and you just go. 140 brake horsepower, 220 newton meters of torque, yeah, 114 top speed, 62 miles an hour, comes in a brisk 9.2, which for a vehicle of this size, considering the power, is really good. Driving characteristics is also something that this, it has, which is really weird for a hybrid SUV to have. It's not overly wallowy, it's quite comfortable around town, it gives you the best of both worlds, with a little bit of roll in the back roads, as you'd expect, because there's extra weight with this having an electric mode to run batteries and all those kind of bits and pieces. But it gives you a decent amount of performance, it's not as engaging as the, the standard is, but that's no bad feat for a hybrid SUV. You then move on to the fact that your steering feels nice, connected, you feel a fair bit, but it's soft, again, the best of both worlds. Braking can be one of those things where when you have a hybrid it feels a little bit weird, a little bit spongy and around town this definitely does have that impression. It does feel a little bit spongy around town because it's trying to regenerate as much power as it can so it's a little bit soft. But when you need it you get a firm response and this really can be great fun to drive. If you wanted to make sure that you are regenerating as much energy as you can, you put this into sport mode you set your regeneration to as much as you can, so you put it in sport, you knock the paddles down. It then gives you maximum regeneration constantly. If you leave it out of sport mode, once you've done some braking, it tends to turn that regen off. So to give you that type of characteristical driving whilst then having a decent amount of power is great. But what about the economy? Now, Honda claim 55 miles per gallon around town. They claim about 49 to 50 on the motorway and about 51 slash 52 combined. And what I found is all of those figures were entirely achievable. Without question, it did it easily. There was one point around town I was getting 63 miles per gallon. It's such a good hybrid system that regenerates so fast, the economy is really, really good. On the motorway, if you're driving at 65 to 70, you will see their quoted figures. If you are going to be pushing up to 70 and beyond, let's be honest, a lot of people do, then you're more likely to see about 47 on the motorway. But to be able to get that kind of high figure around town makes up for it. Your combined runs are regularly, I mean this over two and a half thousand miles has a combined run of 43.2 miles per gallon with journalists driving it. That's pretty impressive. So I guess really Honda have 
they've nailed the normal one and then they've taken the hybrid and they've said let's beat all of the competition and really that's what they've done because currently in the segment i don't think there's a single car on sale which can match it bang for buck a lovely interior with a great exterior with really good hybrid dynamics and to give you a bit of sport feeling as well for 37 to 38 thousand pounds of an ex it comes with everything but if you go for an entry level and you pay 27 28 thousand pounds you're still going to be really happy with the result this is by far the most impressive hybrid suv of this segment i've ever driven ah!